Well, hey folks, this is another video that I'm making by request of my subscribers. I put in the solar last year, a lot of you watched me do that. And since then, lots and lots of people have been asking, can I show you what I did, tell you what I recommend, share my experiences with you, show you what I bought, etc., etc. A lot of people were expecting an install video. I just didn't feel comfortable making an install video because how can I teach you how to install solar when I was learning my way through the process with my own installation? So I didn't make the install video. But now that I've had a good run of it, we've gone through the winter with it, uh, it's performed pretty good. I'll share my experiences with you and I'll show you what I did so we could have solar power. All right. So what I bought was a 400 watt kit put out by Grape Solar. I saw it online. It came with four 100 watt panels, the charge controller, the power inverter, and all of the cables needed to connect it together. So it looks simple enough. There was even a short video showing how to make the connections and I thought, well, I can do that. And I ordered it up. But I'll admit, on the day that I was ready to do my installation, I was a little intimidated because I had no knowledge or experience whatsoever with solar power. But looking through the booklet, it was pretty simple. Everything's color coded, hooked to red to red, black to black, A to B, B to C kind of thing. Really simple. I put it together and never once did I feel confused or frustrated in any way. Actually, it went pretty slick. All right, what I did here was I just made a simple frame out of pressure treated lumber. I ripped the stock inch and a half by inch and a half and I made a square frame. I also put one up the center. So you have three running vertically, two running horizontally, and of course, these cavities are just a little bit larger than the panels. Okay, then beneath this frame, running top to bottom, I have a piece of five quarter PT. All right, now remember, this is only inch and a half by inch and a half that's running vertically, and this creates a lip. And I did the same thing over here. This piece here might be like a three inch rip. And this is the, the butt end of that inch and a half by inch and a half, and this overlaps or should I say underlaps, and it just gives the panel something to sit on. I didn't put a piece on the bottom because I didn't want any water that seeps in between the panel and the frame to get trapped in there and then freeze because it will expand and it might cause damage to my panels. And it really didn't need to be there. So having one up the edge on each side, one in the middle, was enough to hold the panels in place. And then on top of the frame, I just ripped a little piece of PT that overlaps the edge of the panels a little bit, and I put some screws in it. Very simple. Now, if I ever have a problem and I need to access the wiring by behind the panels, I just pop those screws out, a piece of wood comes off, and those panels will lift right out of there. Not a problem at all. It was very simple and very inexpensive. They sell all kinds of framework to hold the panels. But when I was looking at it online, it was really costly. And I've always got scraps of wood on hand. So I did this with scraps, and it didn't cost me diddly squat. Before I put them on the roof, I made an A-frame, and I had them down here on the ground. And that worked out just fine. It was a good place for me to start because that way, if I had something wrong, or I had to make adjustments to the wiring or make changes of any kind, they were right here on the ground. But because of our location, we're here in the woods, we're on the north side of the mountain, which is not a good location for solar power, but it's where we live. Um, having the panels on the ground got a lot less sun than having them on the roof. But now that they're on the roof, they're easy for me to access, just right here with a broom. I pull the snow off of them. If I need to work on the panels, I can access them from a ladder 
It's not hard at all. One question that people had was, how did I mount these to the roof? All right, I didn't screw that whole panel tight to the roof. I have it up a couple inches, as you can see. What I did was I just cut little pieces of pressure treated and I made some legs under there. I have two there, two in the middle, and two on the edge. And then I drilled down through the frame, through those legs, through the roof, and then there's carriage bolts that go down through. And the carriage bolts just come down through the roof and they're mounted there with nuts and washers. When I mounted this to the roof, there were a lot of people asking me how I did that and what process did I use to keep it from leaking. Because like I said, I drilled right through the frame, right through the roof and mounted it with bolts. So I'll show you what I did. So this is some of the ice and water shield that you get at Home Depot. It's the Home Depot brand. It might be GAF brand or something like that. It's sticky on one side, granulated on the other. Now, this strip here is sticky on both sides and it has a plastic covering. I cut a little section of this. I stuck the sticky side to the underside of those little feet. Then once I had the panel exactly where I wanted it, I peeled this off and set it down. And as soon as I did that, the whole panel stuck to the roof. Then put my bolts through and mounted it down. There's been no leaks whatsoever. So after I had the rack mounted to the roof, I just popped the panels into it. I hooked them all together with the cables provided and then the positive and negative feed line came in through the ridge beneath the ridge cap. Okay, so this is the opposite end of the positive and negative feed line that I just showed you coming from the panels. They hooked to the charge controller with the connectors provided. And then this is the positive and negative feed line coming from the charge controller going to the batteries. This was super simple to hook up. Anyone can do it. Okay, so down here, what I have is four of the Renogy 200 amp hour batteries hooked together. They're hooked together, negative to negative, positive to positive, with number two cable. Here on the positive lead, I have a fuse. I have the positive terminal coming down from the charge controller connected there. The negative lead from the charge controller comes over here on the far negative. So here are a couple inverters that I use. When I first hooked up the system, I was using the Sunforce 1000 watt pure sign inverter. It's a nice inverter, but when it was running, you could feel that it was sucking a lot of energy because it was warm. It was very warm to the touch. This is another inverter I bought many years ago. It's a Shoemaker 410 watt inverter. I bought it at the automotive section in Walmart. I've been using this in my cabins for a long time, just with a few batteries linked together, and I would charge those batteries occasionally with my generator. This is a great little inverter, very simple to use, and it doesn't eat any power to speak of. It's never given me any trouble. It's been a great inverter. When I first hooked the system up, I was using the 1000 watt inverter. But our power needs here at the camp are very minimal. We use the solar power for lights, the computers, very small appliances, occasional use of small power tools like drills or a jigsaw. If I was going to use my shop vac or my larger power tools, I would fire up the generator. And since that inverter was eating so much power on its own, I switched back to using this little 400 watt inverter which sucks basically no power on its own and this is working out much better for us. So now I have my 410 watt inverter hooked to my battery bank. The negative terminal goes to the far negative, positive terminal goes to the far positive, 
and this cord comes from a wall outlet it's plugged into here so now this is feeding power into the outlet very simple but effective setup because here the charge controller is showing solid green solid green shows batteries are charged we have four 200 amp hour batteries at full charge perfect well there you go my friends you asked for it that is our power system I gotta tell you it was super simple to put together if I can do it you can do it let me assure you when we first hooked this up we were running on two of these Walmart 29 DC deep cycle marine batteries then we hooked up two more and those were batteries that we were using long before we ever had solar power we were charging the battery bank occasionally with the uh, generator when I was using my power tools I was told about these Renogy 200 amp hour batteries they had some pretty good reviews so I was watching them and when they came up on sale I bought four of them I bought four because my intentions are to add more solar panels in the future right now we're running on 400 watts of panel I'd like to have 800 to 1000 watts of panel and when we are running with that much power coming in I will definitely hook up the larger inverter and keep that hooked up permanently in fact now here we are uh, mid-march the sun's getting higher my battery bank is going a full charge on a sunny day by about 10.30 in the morning. So I might go ahead and swap out my small inverter to the larger one. But through the winter when we were getting minimal sun, this was working out much better for us. Just because it has less drain on the battery bank. Now even if you're hooking up a very small system, for a cabin maybe you just want to run some lights or computer or something like that and you only have one solar panel and maybe even one battery regardless of the size of the system the hookups that I just showed you will remain the same well I hope this answers all the questions that you had if not look into that book it's supposed to be packed with information with instructions that are easy for a beginner to follow and I will be buying it as well I gotta tell you folks, hooking up solar power was a heck of a lot easier and less intimidating than I thought it would be. And I'm sure you will find that also. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. All the best to you and God bless. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go There's a pokey way up in that tree A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss